Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Baptist Distinctives. And we have been going through our lessons uh, regarding a biblical study in what makes the Baptists so unique. Thank you for joining with us. And of course, if you are with us for the first time, you're wondering what we're talking about. But well, we're talking about B Bible authority. We're talking about the autonomy of the local church. Last week, our topic was the priesthood of the believer. Tonight, we're talking about the two ordinances, which are going to be the Lord's Supper and baptism. These are ordinances that God has given to the local church. Next time, of course, we'll talk about individual soul liberty. And I'm going to get into how I believe it is the forgotten Baptist distinctive. We'll talk about that next time. And then, of course, a saved, baptized church membership. And then we'll talk about the two offices of the church later on. And then lastly, of course, the separation of church and state. So if you're with us for the first time, welcome to our Baptist Distinctives Hour. And we're talking about this Baptist Distinctive tonight, the letter T. So the letter B in Baptist Distinctives, it makes an acrostic if you're not following, of course. B-A-P-T-I-S-T-S. -S. So... First week, Bible authority, a time of local church, priest of the believer. Now, tonight, the two ordinances. Are you ready to get into the word of God tonight? Amen? The two ordinances, please. And uh, we're going to be talking about this tonight. So if you have your Bible, why don't you just join me quickly and grab your Bible and then go to the scripture right here. Go to Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20. Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20. And as Christians, as Baptists, we go on what the Bible says. Uh, we don't make things up. And if we do, then the Bible will easily correct us. Amen. But as Baptists, we strive to do exactly what God says. We want to have that right conscience that one day when we stand before God, God will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. And if you're just logging on right now, this is the Baptist Distinctives. A Bible study on what makes the Baptist so unique. And I am your missionary, Frank Denisi. I'm a missionary sent from America. My home church is Temple Baptist Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I'm a missionary here in Cebu City at Gospel of Christ Baptist Church in Talamban. And uh, I just want to give a special thanks, of course, to my friend, uh, Pastor Oliver Ochia, who just recently celebrated his birthday amen anyways before we get started here matthew 28 we know it as the great commission but matthew 28 verse 18 19 and 20 go in your bibles with me the bible says and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. This, this is what we call the Great Commission. You won't find that word Great Commission in the Bible, but this is what the Great Commission is. The Great Commission is threefold. That is, go ye therefore and teach all nations. That is the evangelism. Baptizing them. That is the baptism. And then verse 20, teaching them to observe all things. That is discipleship. So the Great Commission can be broken down threefold, evangelism, baptism, and discipleship. Amen? I hope that easily helps you to understand what it means when a preacher talks about the Great Commission. Uh, the Great Commission is not evangelism, but that is the first part of the Great Commission. The Great Commission is not baptism. But that is the first part of the Great Commission, a second part of the Great Commission. The Great Commission is not discipleship, but that is the third part of the Great Commission. The Great Commission is threefold. And as a local church, as pastors, as preachers, as church members, we cannot obey part of the Great Commission and then call it complete obedience. Because complete obedience means that we are evangelizing, we're soul winning, we're getting the gospel out. And then we're baptizing those who are getting saved. And then we're discipling those who are saved. You cannot disciple unsaved people. They need to be saved first. Amen? So we're speaking of the two ordinances. The, le the, the letter T in Baptist, B-A-P-T, stands for the two ordinances. The two ordinances. And you'll see it there on the list. The two ordinances. 
and I hope this is a help to you. Uh, it's a, it was a help to me back in my Bible college days to understand why we believe what we believe. But as Baptists, there are things that make us distinct. Can I talk to you about these quickly before we get into, uh, before we you know even get more into uh, what God wants us to get into uh, today? Now, uh, there are lots of different ways that you can view uh, the Baptist distinctives. Uh, we're viewing it through a Baptist lens, of course. Uh, we are Baptists, uh, but... The two ordinances are these, very simple. The first ordinance is baptism. I'm, I'm already talking about it. The second ordinance is the Lord's Supper. These are these are what God instituted to be done by the local church. There are some churches that practice something called foot washing, which is what Jesus did. Jesus, as the authority and as the leader, humbled himself and washed the disciples' feet. I once went to a school before, and when I got to the school, uh, the... The teacher told me, uh, we're teaching the kids to be more Christ-like. I said, wow, that's great. He said, yes, we're making them wash the teacher's feet. And I stopped him. I said, sir, you don't understand. Uh, you don't understand what was happening. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. The disciples did not wash Jesus' feet. I said, if you want to teach them to be like Christ, then you, teacher, need to wash the students' feet. And he said, oh, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And I laughed and I said, then they're not going to learn what it means to be Christ-like. But don't be confused, please. Foot washing is not an ordinance, though it is a biblical practice. If you want to wash feet in your church, hey, no problem. But for me, the feet are stinky. Let's stick to the other two ordinances. Amen. Um, but the biblical ordinances as Baptist are Lord's Supper and baptism. Let me get back to you quickly about the Lord's Supper, but let me just finish up baptism here so everyone has a good understanding of what we're talking about. Okay? Now, uh, baptism requires the proper method. Pastor, what do you mean by proper method? Uh, let me say it like this. Uh, people have different uh, uh, ideas about this, but Romans chapter 6, verse 4 says this. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. Colossians chapter 2, verse number 12. The Bible says, For as many as have been baptized into Christ have been have put on Christ, Galatians 3.27. So, baptism, the method of baptism is always underwater, by immersion. It's impossible to baptize somebody by sprinkling. So, as Baptist, traditionally, Baptists have always believed that salvation is by grace through faith, and baptism comes after salvation, and baptism is by immersion. There were some strange sects, S-E-C-T-S, groups that branched off of Baptists and started practicing pedo-baptism, but that was largely due to their influence from the Protestants. And many of the Protestants would baptize babies because they wanted to make sure that they were elect, and it helped with their election. And uh, really, all those isms, such as Calvinism, it's really just false teaching, because the Bible teaches that God is willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. John First John 2 John 2.2 says, obviously, he says, uh, He is the propitiation, not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. And uh, Revelation chapter, uh, I believe it's uh, uh, 21, uh, verse 17, uh, says that there's the river of life, and you can come to this river freely. Amen? There's nothing hindering anybody to come to this, light, to this river of life. Uh, but baptism is for the saved. You cannot... You cannot follow God in baptism if you're not yet saved. Um, the Ethiopian eunuch, while he was on his convoy chariot uh, going down to Ethiopia, that Philip joined him in the chariot, preached Christ to him, and he said, What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said to him, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou, thou mayest. The, the eunuch replied to him, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen? And that is the requirement. So the requirement for baptism is simply salvation. That's what you need to be saved. Uh, what you need to be baptized is to be saved. But listen, baptism does not save you. Baptism does not wash away your sins. It is simply a sign of obedience. I think of the, the proper method, which is underwater. But also, there should be the right motives. If you're going to get baptized, it should be the right motives. 
Matthew 28 verse 19 teaches us, tells us that God commands the church to baptize. Amen? You cannot go to Barangay Hall para sa imong baptismo. Lahi sad ang dip, dako jurang diferensya sa bunyag o baptismo. Bunyag is babies and sprinkle lang. Walay, walay baby baptism sa Bible, walay sprinkling baptism sa Bible, but baptism has always been after salvation for those who are saved, for those who understand it. So the three motives for baptism are obedience and love and joy. Obedience, love, and joy. John 14, 15 tells us, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And then, of course, we know that Christ commanded that we uh, should be baptized. And then I think about the Ethiopian eunuch. After he was baptized, the Bible says in Acts chapter 8, The Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way, rejoicing amen and rejoicing and joy are the byproduct of obeying the lord not just in baptism but in any part of our lives whenever we obey god whenever we obey his commandments joy is the result that follows amen so i think of uh, the method of baptism i think of the motives of baptism and i also think about how the membership of baptism once somebody gets sa uh, saved they need to get baptized it's the first step of obedience Membership happens when you are saved and baptized. We'll talk about this later when we get to the uh, to the uh, baptism uh, when we get to the saved gener regenerated church membership. But let's understand this. Acts two forty one says, "Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about three thousand souls so bible says makaigsunan 3000 people were saved and baptized on the same day what a wonderful and great blessing hey are you understanding baptism so far uh, baptism is something that was given to the local church as an ordinance the local church carries out baptism not city hall not the barangay hall you cannot go to sm and ask for a baptism you cannot even go to uh to the sari sari store and ask the tinda the, the tindero to baptize you okay baptism is something that has been given to the local church we know this as the first ordinance the second ordinance is what i want to talk about tonight is first corinthians chapter 11 take your bibles quickly and go to first corinthians chapter 11 now some of you are wondering uh why the church of corinth the church of corinth was unique it was a kind of a fleshly church Paul was writing them to correct them for some of the things that they were doing wrong. So he had to lay out very simple instruction on how a church should be run. By the time we get to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I want to show you what's happening here at verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and then verse number 23. The Bible says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance. Underline that word, remembrance. Remembrance. There is a Philippines na ay kulturanga, remembrance. Let's take a picture for remembrance. Go to the wedding. Take home a souvenir for remembrance and remembrance. How many of you in your house, you have a bunch of junk, but you don't want to throw it away because it's for remembrance, okay? Um, but under the word remembrance, verse 25, after the same manner, he took the cup when he gets up, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So God tells us to remember often. Look at that word here in verse number uh, 26, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Now, this is very important. This is not a mass. This is a remembrance. The mass has a false doctrine where they believe in something called transubstantiation. They believe that uh, the, the bread literally becomes the body of Christ and you eat the body of Christ like a cannibal. Uh, they believe that the grape juice or the wine that they use literally becomes blood and then you drink blood. And this is false teaching, Mga because the Bible teaches that it is bread and it is grape juice and it is for two times remembrance. Remember that word, remembrance. So, Apostle Paul tells the church at Corinth, you need to remember just at the Lord's Supper as Jesus celebrated, uh, uh, not I don't know what he celebrated, but remembered 
the death that he was going to have in just a few hours, he was telling the disciples, he was showing them, this is what needs to be done. Do this often. Verse 26, for as often. Now, Pastor, how often should the Baptist church have a Lord's Supper? Well, here is the thing. Often is often. You can actually have a Lord's Supper every Sunday night if you want. I believe Lord's Supper should be in the evening. It was evening. But I don't believe it will be unbiblical if it's done in the morning. But I think it would be more biblical if it was done in the evening. Because that was the setting here uh, when Jesus was having the Last Supper. Okay? Uh, kay supper. Nadili pa mahaw. Huh? Okay? Now, I know it's not the kind of supper that you eat. Because look at verse number uh, 29. He that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Pastor, what's the purpose for the Lord's Supper? Look at verse 28. Let a man examine himself. The purpose of the Lord's Supper is a spiritual checkpoint for your life. How many of you experience, especially during COVID-19, daghan mga checkpoint, bisag asa kan nagadto, checkpoint na sad, another checkpoint na sad, nai LTO checkpoint, nai SITOM checkpoint, nai TEAM checkpoint, nai CONSOLACION checkpoint, and wherever you go, checkpoint. So you're always thinking when you approach a checkpoint, sometimes na tagak imong kasing-kasing because, hala, akong ristro, buru expired, and then dak, maybe daplin ka, tuhuna huna lang, you have to examine sa, hala, akong ristro, oh no no, nag-renew di ay ko, nakalim and then you're thinking, hala, akong licensya. Maybe expired akong licensya. And then you think, hala, no, dili pa. Wala pa akong birthday. And then you remember, sakto ang imong licensya. Sakto OR. Sakto CR. Kompleto ang imong papers. Kompleto ang imong licensya. And then you proudly come to the checkpoint. And then the guy tells you to dump lane. But wala kay hadlok. Nga naman. Because you are sakto lang. Everything is complete. This is the purpose of the Lord's Supper. It gives you a spiritual checkpoint for your life because God loves us so much, He does not want us to continue in sin. So this is the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. Now, as Baptists, okay, there are really two major views for the Lord's Supper. The last view that I'm going to share to you uh, is actually an unbiblical view and I will explain it. So in total, there are three ways to handle the Lord's Supper. Okay, here we go if you're taking notes. The first one is what we call closed communion. Closed. C-L-O-S-E-D. Closed communion. Meaning that only the members of that local church, that local assembly, that local body can partake in that Lord's Supper. To be a member of that church, you must be saved and you must be baptized. Okay, only the members of that church. That's closed communion. The second one is is what we call close communion. C-L-O-S-E, meaning that only saved and only baptized members of that church and other churches who are visiting with permission of their pastor, then they have also the privilege if they would like to partake. But there's no pogos. It's not forced. Basta mas maayo nga mananghid ka, mananghid daan sa imong pastor if you're visiting an area or maybe taga province ka and nagpuyo ka sa syudad and then you can ask permission from your pastor to to participate in the local uh, uh, close communion in that church. The third one, I believe, is the unbiblical view. Now, of course, the Bible tells us that Paul broke bread from house to house. Okay, it has two meanings behind that. It could mean he was just eating bread and eating with them. Or it could mean that he was breaking bread and doing the Lord's Supper with the believers. Okay, now that is not entirely clear. So I still believe that the two biblical views for the Lord's Supper are closed communion and close communion. Meaning to say that that Lord's Supper is an ordinance only for church members. Amen. The third one is what they call open communion and delete ni uso among Baptist churches. Actually, I've never met a Baptist church that practices open communion. I've never seen one. And mga kaisunan, believe me, I've been to hundreds of churches in my lifetime. I've been to probably close to 300 Baptist churches in my lifetime. I have been to lots of Baptist churches. I would even maybe put the number of closer to 400. Kay tungod sa akong deputation sa una sa America, sa Canada. I've been all over. And then deputation as sa akong mama o papa, as akong kuyug, sa pagbata pa ko, nag-deputized sila. That number might be closer to 500. But I've never seen a Baptist church that practices open communion. Pastor, unsay open communion? Open communion is when you say, Bisa kinsa, ganahan. 
Pwede lang. Bisag unsaved, okay ra. Bisag saved, pwede gihapon. And that's unbiblical because the Bible says, let not a man, okay, he that drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. That means this, that means as Christians, we cannot participate in the Lord's Supper unworthily. To be part of the Lord's Supper, you must be saved, you must be baptized. Remember, this is written to the church at Corinth, and then to be a member of a church, you must be saved and you must be baptized. It's the reason why as Baptists we teach that the Lord's Supper is for the saved and for the baptized. I hope this is a blessing to you as we talk about the two ordinances. And once again, if you're just kind of tuning in with us for the first time, uh, my name is Pastor Frank Denisi. I'm a missionary here in Cebu City. And these are the Baptist distinctives. Tonight, we covered the T in Baptist, B-A-P-T, the two ordinances, which are baptism by immersion and the Lord's Supper, closed communion or close communion. And I believe both are biblical in their practice. And I'm so happy tonight for everyone being with us. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for investing some of your time to learn a little bit about the Baptist distinctives. And tonight was T, the two ordinances. Next time when we meet, we're going to be talking about the individual soul liberty. Maoni akong ginatawag, the lost Baptist distinctive. The lost Baptist distinctive. So make sure you tune in next time. And then we're going to talk about the lost Baptist distinctive. Hope this is a blessing to you. The two ordinances. God bless you. And uh, let me pray for you before we go. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much tonight. Thank you for being so good to us. And thank you, Lord, for watching over us, Lord. Thank you for allowing our churches, Lord, to uh, to continue, Lord, in the things of God. Lord, I pray for uh, Bible Baptist Church in Consolacion. We pray for Pastor Oliver, his leadership. Bless him more and more. And I thank you, Lord, for the privilege that I have to preach even the T of the two ordinances, God. Thank you so much for the distinctives of Baptists. And I pray, Lord, this is a blessing to others. I pray this now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us once again. This is missionary Frank Denisi, your missionary friend, pastor here in Cebu City, Talamban. And thank you, Pastor Oliver there in Consolacion. And we'll just bring it back to you guys, uh, Brother uh, Missionary Rex, Brother James. Kamotanan diha sa Consolacion. God bless you.